The Bible is made up of contributions of many books that were written by many different authors, some of whom are unknown. Now, the authors of these books were influenced in several ways based on their life circumstances. Although the topic is discussed and heavily debated, there are many ways that people believe that the Bible was influenced by other religions and cultures. What's going on, guys? You're watching FTD Facts. I'm your host, Leroy Kenton. And for this episode, I'm going to be looking at 10 ways the Bible was influenced by other religions. Again, these points are heavily debated, but let's jump into the list. At number 10, we have the story of the Garden of Eden. In Zoroastrianism, the Avesta tells the story of how Ahura Mazda created the world and the first two humans in six days and took a rest on the seventh day. Now, the names of these two people were Mashaya as well as Mashiana. And the story is from the 10th century BCE. There's also a lot of evidence that the Epic of Gilgamesh influenced the biblical creation story also. Next up at number nine, let's take a look at the book of Proverbs. There are some striking parallels between the book of Proverbs in the Bible as well as Amenemope's Egyptian instruction. Though all surviving texts of the instruction of Amenemope are of a later date, the works are thought to have been composed during the 12th dynasty. Now, there has been a lot of debate on this topic, but modern scholars agree that there is enough evidence to compel and support the existence of the instructions in oral form. Next up at number eight, we have the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments in the Bible were given to Moses on Mount Sinai and written on stone tablets, allegedly by the hand of God himself. Now, this was thought to take place around 1490 BC, but when one reads and looks at chapter 125 of the Egyptian Book of the Dead, it seems like well, there's a lot of similarities here. So the Egyptian Book of the Dead reads like the Ten Commandments written in the negative confession. So an example of this would be when you look at the Egyptian Book of the Dead, it says, I have not blasphemed. And then when we look at in the Bible in Exodus 20 verse 7, it says, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who shall take the name of the Lord his God in vain. Which, in other words, is blasphemy. Number seven leads us to the Canaanites. So the Bible says that the Canaanites were a tribe of people who were descended from Ham. Now, they were thought to be a cursed nation that was destroyed by the Israelites. However, the conquests weren't that simple. And it is widely accepted that the Canaanite religion had numerous influences on Judaism and even Christianity. Number six leads us to Isaiah. There's an interesting correlation that exists between the Gathas of Zarathustra's Yasna and the chapters of creation and the book of Isaiah in the Old Testament of the Bible. Now, this can be attributed to the influence that the Mesopotamians held over the Israelites during the time that the Israelites were living in Babylon. And strangely, the book of Yasna asks questions that are answered directly in the book of Isaiah. There are many other examples of influences from Zoroastrianism like this, but this one is very compelling. Another example of some similar text is this. In Yasna 44.3, four to five, it says, who made the roots of the sun and the stars? By whom does the moon wax and wane? Now, the book of Isaiah in the Bible, chapter 40, verse 26, says this, Lift your eyes on high and see who has created these things, who brings out their host by number and calls them all by name. Not one of them was missing by the greatness of his might, strength, and power. Moving on now to number five. Let's talk about angels and angels. Demons. One of the biggest examples of this influence is the existence, structure, and the hierarchy of angels and demons. According to scholars, Zoroastrians were the first to believe in angels. Now, the idea of a devil and the ongoing battle between good and evil also stems in Zoroastrianism. Also, Zoroastrian art portrays the prophet Zarathustra as being surrounded by the same halo of light in which Christian figures are often depicted. 
Heaven and Hell come next at number four. For this, we go back to Zoroastrianism and Persian influences. The prophet Daniel was the first biblical figure to refer to ideas of the resurrection and the day of judgment. And he mentions this in the book of Daniel, chapter 12, verses two. And this is attributed to Babylonian influence as well. Now, the word paradise comes directly from the Persian religion, Mithraism. Now, the word hell seems to derive from the Norse word hell, which is said to be a pre-Christian concept. Now, there are many examples of hell-like afterlives also portrayed in pagan mythology. From there, number three leads us to the Trinity. While the New Testament definitely mentions the concept of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as well as it mentions the Godhead, well, it makes no actual mention of the word Trinity. Now, there is still some contention as to whether or not the Trinity Godhead is a biblical theme. Many Christians today, yep, they still debate it. But Judaism teaches pure monotheism, whereas Catholicism believes in the Trinity. And obviously, most mainstream Christians believe this as well. Yet, it's said that it was a concept that was influenced by pagan religions existing at the time that Christianity came about. Examples of pagan trinities are Amun, Ra, and Ta of Egyptian mythology, as well as Anu, Enlil, and Ea of Sumerian mythology, and Ishtar, Baal, and Tammuz of Babylonian mythology. Going on to number two, we have aspects of the Messiah. While the pagan aspects of the rituals surrounding Christian celebrations can, of course, be explained by the fact that these rituals were intended to replace pagan practices, well, the similarities in philosophy can really only be explained through external influences. Like, although the fundamental aspects of the two religions differ greatly, there are still some remarkable parallels between the teachings of Jesus and those of Buddha, as well as Mithras and Zarathustra. For example, Jesus said, And as you would that men should do to you, do you also to them in like manner. And that's found in Luke chapter 6, verses 31. But the Buddha is also quoted to have said this, consider others as yourself. And that's from the Dhammapada 10, verse 1. Ending this episode off in at the number one spot, we have the flood story. A man was warned of an imminent flood by a god and is instructed to build a large boat to survive. Now the dimensions of the boat are 120 cubits, the building materials are wood, pitch, and reeds, and there are six decks. After the flood, the boat lands on a mountaintop where the man then sends out a series of birds to find dry land, and he eventually lets all of the people and animals free and makes sacrifices to the God who had saved him. Now, although these details sound like they come directly from the book of Genesis, you know, the story of Noah, well, actually, this information is coming from the story of Utnapishim, which is found in the Epic of Gilgamesh. So there you have it, guys. This was just a look at 10 ways that the Bible is believed to have been influenced by other religions. I'm curious to know, what were your thoughts about this? Sound off down below in the comment section. Did any of these come as a surprise? Or do you think that they're all speculation and just baseless claims? Whatever your thoughts are, I wanna know down below in the comment section. And if you found this video useful, informative, or entertaining in some way, don't forget to leave a big thumbs up. I'll catch you guys in the next episode here on FTD Facts.